Welcome. Welcome, Michael. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Um, all right. So today we're going to do uh, the first of hopefully at least a handful of agency webinars. So uh, agencies are one of the, the prime groups of users that use RAMP and our services. And it's always interesting to see the different ways that folks are using our tools, using our services. And Michael and Five Forest have been a longstanding company uh, that are longstanding customers. So, so Michael, I guess let's start, introduce us to uh, Five Forest and tell us a little bit about your niche in the wine industry. Yeah, thanks. So as Heller said, thank you for the introduction. Michael Bourne, CTO of Five Forests. We are a wine marketing agency. And that's always such a large umbrella term. Obviously, so many wineries come to us for web design and web development, especially with their D2C focus using e-commerce platforms like Commerce 7, where we really specialize. But we've been trying to rein that in and focus it a little bit more on how we talk about ourselves. So this year, you're going to hear us say, we don't just build websites, we build businesses. You know, we don't design for design's sake. Everything we do is backed by data and business decisions. And a big component of that is accessibility. And that's what brings me here today. Awesome. Um, when did you first discover accessibility? When did this first come on your radar? Accessibility, it's interesting because it's always been one of those things, especially for anyone in the web design development uh, world where you kind of knew about it or you knew of it or you had heard of it. But until you dive into it, you don't truly understand it. So for me, I actually was introduced in a very personal, physical way. I slipped on some ice and I broke a finger on my dominant right hand and had that put in a cast. Doctor said, you know, expect about six weeks. And this was years back, but our business was growing pretty steadily. So, you know, daily work, I used that hand. It was important to me. And I remember kind of thinking, I can get over this. It's six weeks. It's temporary. I know every keyboard shortcut there is on the internet and all my apps. Things are going to be fine. And what progressed was the most frustrating six weeks of my life where I couldn't navigate a single website that I had to use for my business. The tools were hard. Um, and even admittedly, some of our own websites, we started to see some challenges where I said, oh, that's a little bit too reliant on a mouse. And I remember, I recall very distinctly talking to my business partner, Polly Hammond, at the end of this, and I just said, we're shifting focus. This was the most temporary of accessibility ailments I could ever imagine a real person facing. And if it was that frustrating for me, what do other people have to go through? And that was a huge pivot in our business where we dove in, learned as much as we could about web accessibility. And that brought us to where we are today. Awesome. When do you recall like the first client that asked for accessibility or has it been something that you more kind of proactively started pushing? Yeah, no, it's a good question. So the client education side of it, there have been some that were aware of it and have sort of asked for it. And of course, there was always the sad cases where they just happened to get sued for it. And that was their introduction. But they almost aligned at around the same time as that it happened with my hand in that story. We'd already been learning, figuring it out, um, redoing our own designs, our own processes, improving what we were building. And at the same time, more and more companies were coming to us and saying, hey, talk to us about this accessibility thing. What can you do? So luck was definitely on our side and timing was on our side because our interest in it sort of aligned with the larger audience's focus of now we sort of understand this. And it brought us to Accessible Web by pure chance. A client approached us, you know, a few years back when we first started working together and said, hey, we're going to put this tool on our site. It's supposed to help with accessibility. Can you look into it and see how you can use it? And that happened to be one of your first versions of Ramp. And we looked through it and I remember thinking, oh, no, is this an overlay? So I got on your site, read the documentation and realized, oh, no, this is actually just an effective tool. Let me email the company, set up a meeting, and see how we can work together because this sounds interesting. Interesting, yeah. Um, I, I kind of found accessibility the same way when I was running our agency and it, uh, yeah, discovered it. My mother-in-law couldn't uh, view a website that we had created. 
and it was it was like serendipity i was you know initially stung because i never thought about accessibility felt a bit like a jerk and then you know all of a sudden like within a week i feel like we had a rfp on our desks from uh university of vermont and they had gotten in trouble with the department of uh, education civil rights office and all of a sudden there was WCAG sitting on my desk. And then, yeah, then I looked at a blog a few weeks later, or got an email newsletter about ADA lawsuits and it all just kind of like came into focus all at once. Um, yeah, so so what are your current engagements looking like? How are you, how are you using accessible web tools? Do you primarily use it to like build websites, monitor websites, do you upgrade other people's existing websites? No, yeah, really good question. So in the wine industry, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of winers out there that don't have a web presence. But the ones who do, they were sort of leaning into D2C, direct to consumer sales a lot earlier than other brands. So they had existing websites, many of them on older e-commerce platforms. And that's really where we set our niche of we work with the best tools and we're able to produce the best sites as, you know, Cocky as that might sound, I can back it up. Um, so our typical engagement was actually a rebuild. They already have a web presence. Maybe they sort of know what they want to do on the web, but they need a lot of help refining it. And they would bring us in. Big part, again, my business partner, Polly, huge strategic education background, talking to wineries about how to sell their wine, who to sell it to, how to talk about it. Um, a really high education component and what wineries were lacking was, well, how do we put that into action on the web? You know, you've got a digital sales tool that runs 24 seven. So our engagements are largely focused on rebuilding medium to large size wineries where they have a strong DTC component. They just need a better website that's more usable by more people and can be more effective and help them sell more wine. Cool. But we do brand new builds and as you asked, like, how do we use your tool? So ramp on every single site now it's, you know, no question about it during development, I'll load ramp on the site just so we can catch our own content errors. I always call it the low hanging fruit ramps going to find those easy ones where you just think, Oh shoot, how did I miss that? Let me quickly fix that. And then the newer tools you use probably not as used for myself as much these days, but for anyone getting started with accessibility, so powerful. Your guided manual audit, it's a full accessibility audit. You're going to spend the time learning and perfecting your own skills on those tools, but it's going to walk you through step by step. What is accessibility? How does this actually apply literally to my own website? And what do I do to fix it? And you just check all the boxes. For Five Forest today, though, we're using Ramp on every website, and we use Accessible Web for manual audits on every website that we launch. It's not a line item on an invoice. It's not an upsell to clients. It's just part of our brand promise. When we build you a website, it's going to be accessible, and we're going to get a trusted third party to vet that, just so you don't have to take our word for it. I love that. I think that's super unique because one of the big questions is agencies the work with us are trying to get started on this is like, how do you get people to pay for accessibility? Like, how do you, how do you get them to agree on this, on this proposal to an additional line item or to the additional expense? So love that you all. It's a just fair really, question, yeah, right? right. Like, um, yeah. It's not cheap. It is affordable. And that's where you start to talk about cost versus value. The value you get out of a properly accessible website far exceeds the cost expenditure of getting there. Um, and this always comes up. I actually speak about accessibility in the wine industry quite a bit. I've been on stage four times this year alone at conferences talking about it. The correlation between proper accessibility and improved user experience and conversion rate optimization is wild. The better you do at accessibility, the better your site ends up becoming. So when you talk about cost and how do you get into it or how do I sell this to a client, it's really a value-based proposition. And my ultimate hope, even though I do really love the position my agency is in right now as the only winery agency that's building accessible websites, but I really hope as an industry, it turns into what we now consider mobile responsiveness. Peter, you run an agency, so you remember this 15 years ago, 
people would actually price out to make your website mobile responsive. That's an extra 5,000 on the invoice. You know, it was an add on because it was so new. People were getting rid of the mobile websites or just the shrunken desktop display. And they were learning, how do I rebuild the site? How do I do CSS? How do I make my layout so they can adapt to mobile screens? And they charged clients for it because it was an actual effort they were putting in. Fast forward 10, 15 years, I don't really think anyone thinks about it. You know, how often do you see a proposal that says we make your website mobile responsive? We actually have that just in case there are some old school clients out there that are looking for that terminology, (laughs) but no one thinks about charging for that. And I really hope the world gets to a place where accessibility becomes that, where it's not an expensive add-on. It's a fundamental no-brainer in the web development process. For sure. And I think an interesting parallel is back then, we used to have like due to mobile and these plugins that would make this cheap, yes, you know, borderline unusable version of your mobile web or your website would have a mobile version. It was 10 bucks a month, right? It was super inexpensive. And we definitely had customers that would come to us with their due to mobile or insist that we use due to mobile. And every time I look at an overlay, I think about that same parallel where sure you can put this stopgap measure on, but especially as agencies, we need to learn the skill set, right? Everyone needs to learn this. It's just going to be baked into normal web development, um, you know, hopefully as soon as possible, hopefully now, but certainly five years from now, the goal is right. Everyone's just doing this as a matter of the process of building a, a website or an app. Um, That's the one thing accessibility has on its side is that there's actual laws backing it now. So mobile responsiveness, true mobile first design, that was a slow uptick because it was optional. Accessibility really isn't anymore. Yep. Yeah. And like around that time, just building on that parallel at our agency, we would, we would be in a situation. It's very similar with accessibility where when people needed mobile, right, you had this, this opportunity to either uh, rebuild the website wholesale, right? It was a great way to pull forward business um, because we could say, hey, look, your website's five years old, 10 years old, it's pretty old. And you've been talking about a redesign. Let's just ground up, like build this thing and rethink the content and rethink the design um, and just totally build it from scratch. But there was also this opportunity that's the, the same thing now where you can also kind of keep the design somewhat, you know, with some with some modifications, keep the site architecture, right? So how your site maps organize, what pages you have, but implement accessibility by updating the theme. It's almost like replatforming um, and then building in accessibility at that point. So yeah, total ton of ton of uh, parallels with with mobile. Um all right, let's keep this going for a couple minutes and then maybe we can open up for some questions and go back to uh, back and forth if we need to. Um, let me see here. I, I want to hit on kind of your process that's pretty unique. And this does get into the time savings um, or the fact you can like build it into your pricing. So tell us about by using our manual audit service, how you roll the findings, not just into the current website, the current iteration you're working on, but then kind of your core template. Yeah, no, it's honestly a great question. So process, you know, how do I start with accessibility? How do I continue it? How do I improve it? And how do I reuse it? There's a term in programming called dry, you know, do not repeat yourself. And when it comes to building websites, so much that is carried over. Every designer I've ever met, they have their own little template library, their CSS that they use. And even if every website they produce looks uniquely, you know, special for that client, they built it and it likely should, the underlying code and architecture is being reused. So with accessibility, it saved us a ton of time and money because we do have our own custom coded starter theme for WordPress, which we use on every project. Huge fans of WordPress and Gutenberg in our agency. We love it. But in the early days working with yourselves, Accessible Web, we would find actual fundamental code improvements that could have been made through your manual audits you were doing for us. And this was less about the content we were producing for clients and more about How can we take something that's marginally acceptable with accessibility and make it 
better. And, you know, examples would be the navigation on a website. Was it keyboard accessible? Sure, you could tap through and it worked. But what if we added arrow key navigation and the ability to scape out of drop down menus and transfer into a mobile menu when you resize without needing a page refresh and all these great technical fundamentals where once we figured out the best way to code it in a fast, efficient manner, we went back and just rolled it into theme updates for all of our clients, our starter theme. So the next website we start is already starting at a high level of accessibility compliance. Earlier, you had mentioned a lot of accessibility can be bolted on and it doesn't always require full rebuilds like the old responsiveness. And we've found that's largely true, but not always. And I do think, you know, partners, potential partners that are watching this should understand that at some point you will likely have to redevelop something from the ground up. But one of the best parts about accessibility is there is so much you can do before you get to that point. And your ramp tool is the best starting point. I've, like I mentioned, I've been on stage this year talking about accessibility. I've dropped the ramp mention to everybody. And I say, if you need to do anything, even to learn, it's so hard to ask someone to go look up a blog about accessibility and read it and have them understand. Most people don't learn that way. And they're going to learn by doing. So throw a tool like ramp on your website, see what it finds and just fix one thing figure out why was that an issue? Why did it fail? And then fix it. And then when you have time, do another one and another one. And the more you do this, the more you're going to fundamentally understand the reasoning why and the how to fix it. And eventually you will get to a point where you say, I'm pretty comfortable with the content aspect of accessibility, this tool saying I'm doing great. What's next? And my answer for everyone is that's when you do, you know, deep dives in accessibility, manual audits, whether you want to do a guided tool on your own to actually learn it and how to apply it and how to test it yourself. Or if you just want to work with a great third party that will do it for you, that's your next step. And that might require some redevelopment and some development chops, but that's where you get into the better than the bare minimum. You're already likely legally compliant, but how can you do better for visitors and guests and your own customers in order to actually really start to see the benefits of accessibility? Cool. All right, let's open it up.